Okay, so we are discussing about validation during the life cycle of an analytical procedure as per ICH guideline Q2R2. In the last video, we discussed about how one can understand the performance characteristics, means the parameters needs to be considered for conducting the revalidation for analytical procedure in case of the change in the manufacturing. And we talked about the change in the drug product composition. So in case if you have not watched this video, please uh, go back and watch this video. And then in this video, we are going to talk about change in the drug product or drug substance manufacturing process. What is the drug product change in the manufacturing process? Means you may be thinking about maybe in case of drug product like a tablet, changing from wet granulation to just dry compression or the uh, direct compression. So what is the change and how this change is going to impact onto your analytical procedure? What characteristics of the drug product can get in, influenced or changed? And because of that, what is the influence going to be onto your testing procedure? That has to be evaluated as a part of your risk assessment. And based onto that, you are going to raise the change control for conducting the partial validation. The same is the case in case for the drug substance. You may be changing the manufacturing processes. So what changes are done? Maybe change into the temperature. So how this temperature is going to impact onto the analytical testing procedure? What is going to be the change because of the change in the temperature during the API manufacturing? So that change has to be identified. Why the change has been proposed in the manufacturing process? And based on to that, you will be able to understand what is the risk associated with my analytical procedure. So most of the times, by changing the procedure, if there are no change into the drug characteristics, like if there is no addition of any impurity, or if uh, there is no change in the performance of the drug product, then there may be no need of conducting the partial validation for all the parameters. You can think about maybe conducting the specificity, precision, and at the max, maybe accuracy at one level, at the working level. That can suffice the requirement in case of the change in the drug product manufacturing process, provided your end product characteristic, your specification is going to remain one and the same. You are not going to make any change in the specification. Otherwise, this discussion will not stand valid. The only important point needs to be considered that your product characteristic is not going to get changed. In that case, only three parameters, precision, specificity, and maybe accuracy at 100% level can be performed. And you can always club the precision accuracy altogether so you can save on validation time or number of analysis. So perform the specificity and perform the precision plus the accuracy from the same precision prepared samples. The next parameter is addition of new excipient in drug product. So what is the change? Now this change is quite complex and quite significant. You are adding the new excipient in the drug product. And we talked about the addition of magnesium stearate in our first video as a part of change in drug product composition. So how this new excipient, why this new excipient is proposed by the way? What is the purpose of this new excipient proposal? Understand the reason behind addition of new excipient because that is going to talk about or that is going to explain you what is going to be the impact onto my testing procedure. Now this new excipient is just a non-functional excipient or is it the functional excipient? Non-functional means that excipient is not going to make any impact onto the drug product performance. No impact onto the drug product performance. So in that situation, there is no much uh, risk associated with the drug product performance and that may not impact onto your analytical procedure also. So maybe think about conducting the specificity, maybe the one precision and the one accuracy study. Now, how this is going to impact onto your drug solution stability? If that excipient is not functional, but that doesn't mean it cannot impact onto the drug solution stability, isn't it? 
so that can be assessed and based on to that you can think about whether there is a need of conducting the drug stability uh, solution stability study or not that excipient may not be functional but that may impact on to sometimes the filter compatibility also so how that filter compatibility needs to be assessed uh, in in case of there is a change in the functional non functional excipient maybe like the starch no starch is not acting as a binder but just as a filler so how this change is going to impact on your filter compatibility or filter saturation study most of the times there there may not be much risk but that can be evaluated maybe during conducting the risk assessment process but i think these three parameters are going to be must in case if you are making change in the non functional excipient according to me and same in case if you are conducting the change of any functional excipient you are adding some functional excipient for example you are adding the sodium lauryl sulfate as the excipient now the slh is added for increasing the solubility of your drug substance so that your dissolution can get enhanced that is the main purpose of adding sodium lauryl sulfate as an uh, uh, the disintegrating agent so what is the impact of the sodium lauryl sulfate is going to be on your analytical performance now whether the specificity can get influenced probably yes so perform the specificity right perform the precision and perform the accuracy what about the impact of the sls on to the solution stability or filter as filter compatibility that may not uh you know uh, pose any challenge for i think solution stability or filter compatibility but i would propose you to at least conduct the solution stability because that is always better rather than giving a 10 page dis justification report and you will have because solution stability is very very critical for your analysis so filter compatibility probably can be assessed if there is a specificity and accuracy achieved isn't it so indirectly the filter compatibility can be justified if you perform the precision and uh, maybe the accuracy but solution stability may not so conduct the solution stability at least at the zero time and at the end time period suppose you have proved the solution stability for earlier composition until 5 days so perform the solution stability maybe at initial time point maybe at the 5 days or below that and once it is found to be suitable you can certainly conclude that yes solution stability is not getting compromised because of addition of the functional excipient example sodium lauryl sulfate it is again dependent on to the case to case and you have to think about actual situation so the first one was uh, we talked about the change in analytic change in drug product composition right then we talked about uh, change in the manufacturing processes and the third one we talked about addition of any excipient in the drug product what is going to be the third step now the fourth point it is about deletion of any excipient suppose if you remove any non functional excipient now there could be two excipient non functional non functional and functional excipient so of course if you delete the non functional excipient you know now that excipient may have the neg negative impact on to the drug product isn't it but as this non functional excipient removal is been approved with the some change process that may not influence or negatively impact on to the drug product characteristic let us assume that point first but what is that non functional excipient uh, role I, it is just a filler so in that case there may not be need of performing any validation parameter so it is going to be a nil you you need not to perform any validation parameter if it is a non functional excipient but in case if it is a functional excipient then now this functional excipient may be helping in terms of achieving the desired ph of the formulation and return to that that may be helping in achieving certain ph of your analytical solutions and because of that may be extraction is efficient your solution stay is stable so if you remove the non functional excipient especially 
there may be there may be impact on your performance characteristics and i propose precision specificity accuracy maybe solution stability can be the next point so understand whether there is impact on to at least these four important critical parameters there is no need to perform robustness there is no need to perform uh, detector linearity in case if it is there but at least these four parameters can be thought of specificity can get compromised if uh, our specificity may not also get compromised according to me if you are removing the excipient isn't it if you are removing the excipient then specificity need not to get compromised but if that functional excipient is helping you to achieve the desired outcome of your testing procedure then maybe the precision accuracy or solution stability can be evolved but most of the times the functional excipients are not generally removed the functional excipient no one is going to remove unnecessarily so most of the time the situation is going to be always removal of non functional excipient and in that case you need not to perform the validation there is no need to perform a revalidation so deletion of deletion of existing excipient from the drug product may not require the partial validation that is the point i wanted to make over here what is the next point the change in batch size for drug product or drug substance now this is the manufacturing scale you are changing but are you changing any product composition absolutely no so in that case i think this particular change this particular change that is change in the batch size for the drug product or drug substance may not required to conduct the validation so again there is no need to conduct the partial validation you can certainly be off as there is no impact on to the performance characteristic of your testing procedure so these are the five important points i think we discussed so far let us understand the next point the change in packaging components for drug product or drug substance now the change in the packaging composition can have the influence impact on to the the drug product or drug substance stability there may be change in the characteristics of the drug product maybe the hardness can get changed maybe the moisture can get changed there could be change into the degradation of impurities also there may be a uh, addition of degradant or there may be a deletion of any possible degradation because now the new packaging component is protecting your drug substance or drug product better so in that case i think the change in the packaging components most of the times if it is done for betterment of the product may not need to perform any kind of the validation you can certainly waive of the validation provided there is no any extractable leachable issues provided that there is no negative impact of the change in the product composition on to the degradation of the drug product or the drug substance so according to me yes uh, the change in the drug product composition <coughs> is the significant change and you need to consider the method valid revalidation change in the drug product or drug substance manufacturing process is also a significant change and there is need of the revalidation or the partial validation addition of new excipient in drug product may need to perform the some partial validation if not full deletion of excipient generally not required to be considered for any partial validation change in the batch size for the drug product composition again the the this, this point there is no need to perform any partial validation and the last point change in the packaging components if it is for betterment of the product shelf life and the protection no need of any conducting the partial validation so these are the six important point which are related to the manufacturing changes in the next video we will talk about the changes in the analytical procedure thank you so much